All right. Here's day two of uh, you need more length on that. Oh, good. good. Of a uh, cast and crank podcast in Yuma, Arizona, with a uh, Frankie. He's supposed to be on how long ago, man? Probably like six or seven months ago, right? Uh, yeah, it was supposed to be in April. Should get a little closer than that. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> <It's> a- <laughs> I think it was supposed to be in April after the Clear Lake tournament. Yeah, and then you had a family emergency, so yeah. it was cool to get him back on, and he bring his father as well. What's your name? I'm sorry. Wally. Wally, okay. Uh, he's the guy that made the champ over here. <laughs> um, so did you did you grow up in Arizona? Yeah, Kingman. Okay. Uh, what was your local, like, fishery? and Kind of your dad, I guess. Yeah. Dragged on. Have you been a tournament fisher? For- uh, not really. Uh, not till he got into it. Okay. Oh, really? So you were just taking them for fun? Right. Okay. Um, so what lakes did you kind of cut your teeth on? Like Havasu and Mojave. Havasu? Mostly the river. Okay. Because, you know, Havasu is crazy. And we just go launch at Topok for the day and go out and fun fish and do that. And then we're like Mojave. So and mostly that or Alamo. We went to Alamo a ton. Yes. What, uh, what got you into, like, the bug to, like, tournament fish and stuff? I'm just watching it on TV, man. Yeah. I just seen all those guys and seen that, and I was like, dude, that's freaking cool. I want to do that. <laughs> he, he did that, but we took him to, uh, like, our, our local fire department had an annual tournament out of South Cove on Lake Mead every year. Um, the Arizona Highway Patrol Association had one at Alamo every year. And when he was growing up, if I wanted to go to those tournaments or go fishing, I had to take the kids with me. My wife wasn't going to pay a babysitter so I could go fish, so. That's kind of, I mean, I changed his diapers on the boat. That, that's when he's, he, he's been fishing with me since he was a kid. I mean, since he was born. Were you, uh, were you like live bait or were you just kind of like fishing like actual like? We were bass fishing. Okay. Yeah. Um, I never really got into tournament fishing and I, I couldn't afford it back in those days because I was raising a family, you know. And, um, and so we'd get in these little contests like that with, with various uh like the fire department thing and, and i think he got the bug there because we were fortunate enough to win a couple of those deals and and um he liked the competition okay then how old were you when you kind of stepped into the tournament scene did you guys fish together as a team tournament yeah just like those you know like you said the firefighter tournament him and uh it was me him and um the guy i work for now my actual boss oh really yeah he was <laughs> like those two were kind of the ones that Really, you know, I'd just see them, you know, fish and get all competitive and want to win, and, you know, and we'd won a couple, and I just, I got into it, you know. But then uh, I don't even remember what year it was, like probably 2009. It was Thanksgiving weekend. We met a guy, his name's Curtis, Curtis Delagrange. He ran the Phoenix Junior Bassmasters out of Phoenix, and we met him on Thanksgiving weekend at Alamo and kind of lost touch, and then we talked to a lady at Bass Pro Shops about it, and she gave us Curtis's number, and we didn't even remember the guy. And he calls up Curtis, which is funny now because he's like one of our buddies. Yeah. And we got into it, and that was I was I think I was in eighth grade. I was like thirteen years old when I started Dude, fishing tell tournaments. The whole story, man. He was about. <laughs> he, <laughs> See, this is why you need dad here. Numb this nuts. Kid, this numb kid's nuts. been too humble over here. Huh? Numb nuts was about to flunk out of school, and we were trying everything we could. In eighth to, grade. Yeah, and we're trying everything we could to keep him focused in school, and you know, and they were saying he's ADHD and all this crap, and you know, um, he needs to be on this Ritalin or whatever. That, yeah. And we're like, no, we're not putting our kid on drugs, and 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 uh, so we set him down and go, what's the? He goes, dude, dad, all I want to do is fish. You know, and I want to do that junior thing that that guy told us about at Alamo. And, and so we made the call and realized it was actually it was, we had to go join their club in Phoenix because we didn't have anything in Kingman. It's a three hour drive to Phoenix. So we go down there to their meeting and, and I'm sitting there looking at this guy. and I'm like, man, he looks familiar. And he's looking at me. And, and at the end of the meeting, he, it's not, he remembered first. He goes, dude, you're the guy that we were drinking beers with in the in the campground at Alamo. And I go, yeah, this is my son. He goes, yeah, he was out riding his bike. And and, and I'm like, yeah. And so we took off, and Frankie fished the junior thing and, and had pretty good success at that. And um, and Did you, did you know, though, like, so, A, I have two questions for you because this is great for kids. I have a lot of kid, people have older kids. I have a 17, a, a 12, and a and a five 
So when you went through that, I did the same thing with my son. It was drums. Right. I played drum line. Um, did you make a deal with them and go, hey, Frankie, if you go to school and you, and you try to get good grades or at least pass, you can well, fish absolutely. the thing? Or how did that work? Absolutely. We told him, you know, as um, long as you have passing grades, just like you're in any other sport, as long as you have passing grades, mom and dad will make sure you're at these tournaments. You'll get, you'll get to go to these. And, you know, his grades came up just enough to get into the tournaments but <laughs> but that between that and pulling weeds and picking up dog shit around the house yeah <laughs> same know, here that we, my son barely barely he's 17 right. he's working at Knott's Berry Farm right now nice. so I'm like he barely passed and I'm like thank god yeah you know I know you're like me I did the same thing I, I got called on my graduation out of line so it went, it went tz <laughs> and then back to Trujillo again and I'm like oh my mom was so happy but yeah well I get it when, when he got his high school diploma, we had to make sure it was a diploma, not a certificate of completion, you know. I mean, but, uh, you know, it, but fishing kept him focused enough and, and kind of it was, it was the carrot we were dangling in front of his face to make him behave. Mm -hmm. And, and it, it worked, and, it, I mean, he had a passion for it. What I was surprised was how many kids were involved in it. You know, not not just in Arizona, but nationwide. I mean, we went to the Western Regionals up at Clear Lake. That was the first time we'd ever been there. Can you break down how it works? Like, is it? Uh, do you have like a, a boater that drives a boat? And yeah, you... it's usually one of the kids' dads. Okay. Yeah, they they call them volunteer captains, and you bring your boat, and you, each each boat gets two kids, a younger one and an older one at that time, and you take them out and. The kids, like I would flip a coin and let the youngest kid call, and whoever wins gets the front of the boat first, and we go to wherever they want, and and that's how that worked. And did they make sure you didn't have your kid on your boat? Yeah. yeah. So that that was that was a big rule. Yeah. Because I know. heard someone else talk about this before. I forgot who it was, and they said it could get real weird. Mm -hmm. yeah. It, yeah. I'll tell you what was weird is I drew a little girl one time, and you know, eight hours out on a boat, eventually someone's going to have to take a leak, and and. What do you do? You got a little girl on your boat. Got to go back <laughs> in, right? You got to go back in. Well, she she was cool. I'm just like, hey, turn around and face the back of the motor for like yeah. 35 seconds here, and and I don't know. She must have had iron iron innards because she never stopped. And, and <laughs> but you know, it just there's just it. There was differences that we never think about because we're always just fishing with guys, you know. And but there was little girls in it. That it was it was awesome. It was awesome. Do you, do you remember any of those girls coming and keep going into, like, becoming tournament anglers? Not off the top no. of my head, really. Because that's a hard one to find. Even these days, I've only had Rachel Eribe on. That's right. it. Yeah, I, that, fished, I, mean, I fished with her in September. She was my co-angler at Havasu. She can fish, dude. Yeah, she was good. Yeah. So, I mean, they're, they're hard to find. Right. The, the girl, like, I always tell, I get people message me, why don't you have more women on? I'm like, it's hard to find them, man. I got to fact right. check them. Yeah, and most of the time I say it's yeah, fat titties and ass. That's what it's. <laughs> it's you know, and I can't like. What is it going to be about? How do you catch your fish? Yeah. Well, the guy hands me the pole and I, you know, the rod and I, you know, I don't know, and yeah. it might not be that way, but I, I can't, I don't know. I'd have yeah. to do a lot of research, and I'm not trying to be chauvinistic or anything, but you guys see it. I mean, yeah, there's a handful of women that can really fish in the tournament series, too, right? As yeah, well. like I've drawn Rachel. That one time I have a suit, and then I drew uh, Deanna Moreno. I heard she's really good, I've too. drawn her twice, and she's pretty cool. Yeah. So that's cool. I got it. I mean, I'll have to, like, pick your guys' brain on some women to get on because that'd be cool to have more women and have a different variety. But mm -hmm. So when you're on that, the, it's a Bassmaster Arizona, what is it, Youth? Uh, what was it called? That one that we did when I was a kid. Uh, it, was it was FLW. The, yeah, well, the TBF. Right. Okay. It was a TBF. How long did you do that for? Well, I did it in Phoenix for... I think two years, mm -hmm. or no, a year. I only did it a year. Right. And then we started our own deal in Kingman. You did. Yeah. You well, did. him, him, and six other. They had to have six members that were affiliated with the, the TBF. Board. Okay. And then with an active bass club, so he got himself a couple of guys that didn't even fish. I had, got a bunch of dads, <laughs> and we created a club on paper. How how big was the club? We had just enough members. Um, we didn't even have any meetings except the first one to get to get started, um, 
and then we started our own club and it, it took off in kingman there was we started off i think we had 18 or 20 kids that yeah, first year yeah and and um you know and it, it got to be where we were having trouble finding boats for everybody and and thank goodness the community circled around these kids and people showed up and brought boats and you know some of them weren't the most uh pristine bass boat but the kids got to go fishing and, and they all had a lot of we had a lot of fun yeah um, how long did you do that for uh two years okay and we had uh actually it was three years three years three years we had uh a gentleman there in kingman he's actually a retired police officer that writes uh articles for the you know out sporting and outdoor articles for the newspaper a gentleman by the name of don martin that went to work and actually got us a grant through the arizona game and fish nice that we were able to pay like when when a guy would bring his boat and he may not even have kids in the tournament but he'd bring his boat and his truck we could pay his launch fees give him a little bit of money for gas um and we helped out some kids that didn't have a whole lot of tackle um get them equipped um gary garland was still alive at the time yep and he helped us out quite a bit with canyon plastics when it was when he still owned it um when we were first getting going and then that uh mr pennington also jay, jay pennington also helped us when he bought it from gary um it, it, it was it was pretty cool but do then, you still have something like that now no um the tbf changed their deal and they they went instead of age groups they went to a, a team format with high school fishing okay and it just we just fell aside it just fell mm. aside up there that's sad to hear i mean it seems like it was a really good program it was and i mean to get it's hard to find stuff like that for kids nowadays yeah especially yeah. five dollars a gallon for gas not many guys are jumping to go run their boat for five dollars wait yeah California, well, that's like seven here yeah, right <laughs> but yeah yeah and thank god i have a 60 and i don't have a, a 250 yeah. yeah yeah i'm getting a new 225 bolted on my big boat <laughs> yeah next yeah. week that's a, that's a lot of gas yeah <laughs> so uh you did that you you had the club uh when was what was the next step from there uh high school high school fishing um they had a team here well, we didn't have a team. And it, the high school deal, you could kind of back then, it wasn't like as organized, I guess you could say. And you could just fish with whoever you wanted. Okay. And I tried to get like four or five of my buddies in Kingman to do it because the state championship was coming up on Havasu. And it was the same weekend as prom. I actually broke up with my high school girlfriend because she was like, no, you're going to go to prom with me. I said, no, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go fishing. So Hey, it happens. <laughs> yeah. A lot more and more down the line, too. <laughs> <laughs> but... Uh, that happened, and then I ended up fishing with a kid named Shane Edgar, and we won the state championship on Havasu. High school, yeah, in high school. Who were you? Who were you fishing in? What? what uh, how many schools? Stuff like that. I don't even remember how many teams it was. I was uh, yeah, freaking eighteen or twenty teams, okay. I think. Yeah, they were all from Arizona. Or yeah, was it, all, it was the Arizona okay. state championship, and then the winner from that, we got to go to Clear Lake, like you said, and we went up there and. My grandma and grandpa, actually, we drove up together. And it's kind of a funny story. So, like, if you follow the map to go to Clear Lake, you know, normally it takes you to Williams and you get off on, I think that's Highway 20, that goes straight over to Clear Lake. Well, no. We drove through California and we went up and it took Hold us. On, so, the one, the way I went there, I think I know what you're talking about. Because I went the there and we went through the hills forever, dude. Yeah, and dude. it was like, my wife's like, dude, this is crazy. Yeah. And I was like, wow. And, and I went to Paul Bailey's house to do mm -hmm. an interview. And that's why I never fished there. I just went there. And I get what you're talking about because I went yeah. the wrong way. You I go think. through like Napa Valley. And then yes. Go yeah, dude. We were calling it the freaking Matterhorn. Dude, was like, how crazy was that? And then coming back down and try, it was yeah. raining. I was like. Try it towing a 20-foot bass boat. How long did that take you? <laughs> it took a while, dude. I was And I was 17 driving by my with my grandma and grandpa. My grandpa, he's laughing. He thinks it's funny. You know, I'm freaking like white knuckled <laughs> driving up this thing. Grandpa gave him the wheel because his Parkinson's was kicking in. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was freaking funny. And that was your big tournament, the Clear Lake. You you fished by yourself that one? I fished with Shane. Okay. Him and his dad drove up like three or four days after I did. Okay. And, and you uh, pre fishing? I pre fished and you they showed up. You're 17 years old? Yeah. Dude, that's wild. Like, I don't trust my kid to do anything. He's 17. <laughs> yeah, they, they took my boat. You yeah. trust him with your boat. Well, <laughs> my dad was there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. So uh, you got there. Uh, you fished Clear Lake before or no? That was the first time there, and it was really intimidating, you know, because, like, you launch, and you're, you're out in the middle of the main basin out there, and 
you look at your graph and it's 10 foot deep and there's grass everywhere and you're like dude where do i even start but luckily they had the back then it was the ever start series mm -hmm. they were going on and my cousin and uh i don't know if you know scooter griffith i don't i don't know a lot of tournament but, guys well josh knows scooter okay. they they have the arizona fishing guys together okay but um they fished and john got like second or third place as a co-angler in that tournament and he was like keep cluing me in on some stuff that was going on and i'm like okay so i went and checked it out and i found it and then we ran over there in the tournament and we freaking smashed them dude that was good that was it yeah, yeah we were did cranking anything them. from the havasu like from where you're fishing did you use any techniques at clear lake that kind of worked for you or did not, you just not that go around no no so we you, were, owe, you owe your cousin then yeah. what's that on that one yeah i <laughs> <laughs> he he gave me the 10XD that we caught all those fish on. He literally like he's like I got to go back to Arizona right now. He cuts it off. He hands it to me. He goes throw that all day tomorrow. And you didn't have an X14 then, right? No, <laughs> no. Um, so did you know how to crankbait fish then? Were you were you into crank? Like, yeah. Were you good at that? I wouldn't say I was good. I kind of understood it okay. a little bit. It's still not my strong suit, but I like to do it when they're. It's cool it. to hear as that young of a kid like. I mean, tournament angling, like, I, I I have fun fishing. I still can't think like someone like, right. you know what I'm saying? It's so weird to me. My yeah. color changes, patterns. Well, okay, how do you throw a crankbait here? I don't know. Yeah. My calico is a different story. That's, <laughs> right. You know, like, there's maybe five different things I can choose. But when you're in the water and you're tournament fishing, and by no means am I like a good, you know, freshwater guy. It's crazy to see you make choices. Yeah. Oh, I see, you know, rip rap or whatever it might right. be. And at that age, were you kind of getting it already? Yeah. I mean, like, it seems like the more time you spend doing a certain thing, you kind of just get more of an understanding for it and a feel for things. Like, you know, like I flip and frog a ton. And like, I can just, like, kind of like an instinct, you know, pull up on some tulies or a grass mat in the river and just look at it and, you know, and just like, yeah, well, that's where they're going to be. Right? Yeah. You know, they're not there all the time, obviously, but. You kind of you already have an idea and when you're flipping you know you have a feel for it and just it just like starts to become natural yeah right you know so after that tournament you guys took uh, what did you take at that tournament uh we won you won that tournament we won that oh, we had wow. like 24 and a half pounds or something like that what is the prize on the on winning that uh cash to check to go to the national championship for high school Whoa. so then where was where did you fish national championship uh lake kiwi in south carolina Break it down, brother. So that place, you know. Get a little closer to that mic. I keep. I'm not. Up. I'm not gonna say what I usually say in front of your father. I say, "Suck of the dick." Get closer. <laughs> <laughs> but you got closer to that thing. Yeah. But uh, I did a lot of research. You know, watch watch a lot of YouTube and stuff. And then we got there, and after like looking into it, I figured out it's like a predominant spot lake, like all spotted bass. But I knew there's largemouth, and so. We went out, we got there, and we just went out that afternoon just to go screw off and just kind of check stuff out. And I think the it's first... Freezing cold rain, dude. Well, the first day we got there, we are in shorts and sandals. It was nice, you know. <laughs> and the first fish I caught was like a six and a half pound largemouth. So you are like, this is easy. I'm like, this is what's... That's all I'm talking about. But, uh... And then we woke up the next morning to actually start pre-fishing. And, dude, we walk outside, and it's like snowing and sleeting and like 30 degrees... It was miserable, dude. I've never been anywhere where it rained for four days without stopping. And I, I mean, without stopping. It was it's so just, cold. Oh. And, and how many days did you have to pre-fish before that tournament? We fished for four days. Okay. And we ran all over the lake, but we always found ourselves coming right back to this exact same creek where I caught that big one. And the tournament came around, and Shane pre-fished too, you know, and he found some brush pile. He wanted to catch spots, and I... Those are like smallmouth to me. Man. I hate catching small. I, yeah. I don't hate them, but I'm way more comfortable with shallow water fishing for largemouth. Yeah. So we did that for like three or four hours and never caught a fish. And then he's like, I don't know, let's go try your stuff. And we went back there and he caught a, bi a, he caught a big one. And then we just ran around and it was like post front. You know, it was like, it was nice the tournament day. Yeah. And so we just ended up just drop shotting yeah. the rest of the day around docks and caught like nine or 10 pounds and freaking won the national championship you won the national championship yeah, in high school so then what did you get out of the national championship uh we got 10 grand five grand to each person to split yeah wow then uh did you have the bug after that you're like okay i think i can oh, do dude. this <laughs> yeah uh, that, that, that lit the fire man that like and i i just i was graduating like a month after that too uh -huh. so i'm like man i got five g's in my pocket i'm gonna 
look out, I'm going to be on the Elite Series in like a year and a half. Like, no problem. <laughs> you know? I was all cocky, arrogant, little high school kid, yeah. you know? And, yeah. Didn't work that way. Well, we <laughs> got, my, got my throat stomped in. Well, you just, they had all the FLW pros going out of, uh, like, Hartwell at the same time this was going on. Yeah. So, he got to meet a lot of, and, you know, and, and rub elbows with a lot of people. They were, they were staying in the same hotel as us. And, and uh, you know, and that, that was a pretty good experience. I remember we were launching the boat one morning for pre-fish, not an old beat-up 86 393 Ranger with a with an old, you know, mosquito getter and a big old smoking <laughs> motor on it. And he backed me in and went and parked the trailer. And, and was it Scott? It was Scott Martin. Scott Martin was standing on the dock sending the college guys off and, I'm out there in this old beat-up red boat, just a cloud of smoke around me. And Scott told him, you know, he goes, is that your dad's boat? And he, yeah, he goes, and called it Vintage. And Frankie tells me this, what he said about my boat when he got in the boat. And I said, would you tell him Vintage is going to kick everyone's ass tomorrow? <laughs> <You know? laughs> but he didn't. But, uh, you know, it, it, that, it, was, it was a good trip. Yeah, that was fun. So when, so when you got back, um, what was the plan? Uh, my plan was to just... Because I had a job at that. I worked at Sonic. <laughs> so I was like, man, I'll just, just work when I need to, you know. I'm, yeah. You're not looking at 10 years down the road, you know. I'm like, I'll just work when I need to. You know, I'm at my parents' house. You know, it's cool. I got a boat. I'm just going just gonna to go fishing and you know, just, just fish and survive off of that. And after about a year, that five grand and every other dime I would have spent was gone. And I hadn't won any money fishing. What tournament series were you fishing? Just team tournaments? Uh, or? Back then, I fished the Weekend Warriors. Okay. They're like a local like amateur deal out here. Okay. And then, uh, like the club stuff around Kingman. There was a, we have our own bass club now, but there was the there's the Kingman Bass Club. We fished that, and then another one out of Mojave Valley. So just like small clubs and the Weekend Warriors, and the guy actually bought my Ranger that I have now. We fished ABAs together. Okay. And he actually like, he showed me a lot of stuff. You know, is like, that when everything changed when you started fishing ABAs with them? That's kind of like when it became like, well, if I'm going to do it, I need to go all in, you know, and just try to do it out west. And, you know, I tried. I did a couple ever starts as a co on Havasu, and I just never liked it, dude. Is it, is your Was your goal to do it out west? Yeah. And not, you know what I'm saying, not. Well, obviously, you know, you're like sitting there, man, I want to go fish back east. I want to go fish with the big guys, but. Once you start doing it, you kind of realize the big picture. It takes a lot, man. It takes a lot of time, a lot of money, and it is, it's probably more than a full-time job, I'd imagine. Mm -hmm. Never yeah. done it, but. Yeah, and I think it's something to be said to do it from the West Coast, because how many guys do it from the West Coast? Not many. A lot of guys try, and they come right back. Yeah. You know? So, I mean, I think that's a big accomplishment for those dudes that do do it. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's a big deal. Definitely hats yeah. off you know? to them for that. So, once you started doing the ABAs uh, and you started figuring stuff out, what mindset changed? Like, what did you learn some new techniques that you you figured, man, this is my bread and butter? Or not really like techniques. It's more like the mental side of it. You know, my buddy Ben that I fish ABAs with, him and another guy named Ray Lillard. Uh, I fish with those two a lot. You know, and Ray was always telling me like off the movie Bad Boys. Uh, like rub your earlobes because like dude i'd lose a fish and have a meltdown yeah. and he's like dude just you got me three pounders live in this lake just yeah. shut up and keep fishing like get over it and that kind of like helped me just get your mind right more than because like catching the fish part sometimes that's the easiest part you know it's what's going on up here is that's, that's kind of the, that's part. that's the biggest challenge for 90 percent of people to fish how much were you getting in your own head in the beginning Dude, every tournament dude like yeah like it mattered to me like if if my crankbait was too new like oh dude i just pulled that out of the box i'm not i, I, I don't know start, like, start stepping on it throw it on the ground dude just like weird <laughs> stuff you know like yeah <laughs> i just would overthink everything and you end up just getting spun out rather than just kind of going with the flow yeah um so when you're fishing the abas when did when did you start like placing and cash and checks and stuff pretty much like right away because just because ben you know he's he was a stud on lake mojave he doesn't fish anymore but uh you know we'd go out and you know we actually won ang almost won angler of the year like two times roy hawk beat wow. us both times imagine that but um <laughs> you know it was pretty cool you know getting to kind of know some more of the guys around there and it just just seeing that you know and being close to winning all those times it just kept you want like coming back you know yeah 
So how long, so timeline-wise, what year is this your fish in ABAs you're winning? Like 2014, 15. Okay. Then when did you decide to even step it up more than that? Uh, I'd say like 2019, 2020. So recently, you're just kind of like, how old are you right now? 26. Oh, so you're he's still a little guy. Yeah. Oh, man. Okay, so you know you're 22, 23, going, I'm, I'm going to do this. This yeah. is what I'm going to do. Well, What was your plan of attack? Just try to get into him, like try to be able to afford to do him. Yeah. You know, uh, me and him fished a lot of team tournaments together and stuff like that. But I kind of just, I wanted to fish the pro-ams. I never could afford them. And like I said, my buddy, uh, Micah Jones in Kingman, mm-hmm. that dude's like, if it wasn't for that guy, I wouldn't have accomplished anything that I have had happened in the last two years. You know, like hats off to him 100%. Yeah. yeah. You know, and uh, I'm fine, just spaced out. Dude, he's had a lot of help from some pretty pretty influential people. Um, you know, Micah, you can't say enough good about him for helping Frankie get into these bigger bigger money tournaments. Um, and, and like J.J. Gibbs at Gibbs Propellers in Havasu, I mean, they, they keep his boat going. They're, they're putting a new engine on it next week for him. Um, Ray Lillard has just been over backwards. Ben Gross up there. there there's a – the list just goes yeah. on of, of guys that have, you know, Scooter Griffith and, and those guys took him in when he was – I think you, – were you out of high school when you got in the first U.S. Open? Um, yeah, I just graduated. And, and, I mean, they they took him in and said, hey, come camp with us, stay with us. Um, and, and, you know, Paul Hodges, there, there's just a handful of guys, Arizona guys mostly that – just took me under their wing took you know? him under their wing and and i think they saw that there's some talent there you know and uh so they're they're helping a guy get a chance you know because yeah. this would be like it's like every kid that plays high i mean what is there six million guys playing high school football and only one out of those is going to make yeah, it you know right. i mean that's kind of like the big league of bass fishing it's there's so many people that are fishing and that's why i didn't do a whole lot of tournaments with him because I'm not that good, you know, <laughs> and I know that. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, you know, I, and it's when you get on a boat with a guy like him or Cody or, or, or you know, certain certain guys that I know, you know, they're fishing at a completely different level. Yeah. You know, a completely different level, and 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 just the sheer numbers of fish that they put on versus what you're putting on the boat should tell you that, you know. And some guys are talented in other aspects, but there are guys that have a gift and. I think that he could be one of them. He developed that gift, you know. So when, um, so when you decided to go into the pro-am tournament, which was like the one bass, mm-hmm. uh, what was your first big one you did? was the U.S. Open in 2015. Okay. I fished that, and then it was terrible. I did terrible in that tournament. <laughs> but um, So the U.S. Open, I think Todd talked about it. You pick – you get a random angler. Is that the one? Yeah, random angler shared weight. So, like, if your co catches a five talk, pounder, talk about this. This is the stupidest fucking thing I ever heard of. I like it. Yeah, but if you get a guy that's a complete idiot that's eating a sandwich and messing around, doesn't that screw you? I mean, I I try to not build the guy that depends on your co angler to catch a big one for you, you know. But so I don't really. It doesn't. It would bother me. It would piss me off. Like, hey, dude, yeah. get up and fish. Like. I didn't bring you out here for a joy ride. That's what I'm saying. Have you gotten one of those yet? I haven't. So then, you know, <laughs> just wait until you're ready to win. And <laughs> yeah. Like, the guy I drew on day day two of that U.S. Open that year, did he showed up. Like, I don't even know if he fishes. Like, I don't even know who he was. Like, he shows up with, like, three ugly sticks in, like, those, like, Walmart reels that come in, like, the... like Bubble packs? Yeah. Freaking with, like, snap swivels and, like, 40-pound braid. That's the guy I drew, and I'm like, eh, that's cool, man. Like, <laughs> we'll get him, you know. And we didn't get him. Yeah. But uh, so yeah. then when you bring when you bring that co angler on, you're kind of giving them the juice. Yes. For that day. Yeah. You know so that could. I mean, you got to. Oh, that's hard. You got to trust that guy, especially if you're trying to do really good. Yeah. So that's kind of the the um, <laughs> they're throwing a wrench in the in the works a little bit with. That, yeah. Right. I mean, and I'd say ninety percent of them are pretty trustworthy dudes you know like you can if you're if you go crack them on a spot and on a certain way that guy is not gonna go well it's in the rules if that co if like you go to the next spot the next day and that co-angler you had pulls up with his pro 
that you hadn't seen there, then you, you tell report, you tell Billy. You tell Billy and they're yeah. done, dude. All right. Billy did not screw around with that stuff. Okay, so that's kind of cool. I didn't know all the rules. Too, yeah, but that's that seems like a legit thing. But yeah. So uh, that first year, uh, how did how did the days go? You like and and it's your home lake, right? Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't consider me as much of a home lake. I've never liked it because mm-hmm. it's just it's like, it's like fishing on the moon. Mm-hmm. You know, <laughs> I love Lake Mead. Don't get me wrong; it's a cool lake. It's an awesome lake. I really wish the U.S. Open could go back one of these years, but um. I was just young and experienced, you know, and just thought I could do it. And that was in 2015. That was the first pro tournament I ever fished as a pro. And you were 18 at the time or 19? 18. 18, okay. And it, I didn't do grid. You know, I. You didn't try to go as a co angler in the beginning? No. I wanted to go straight to the front. Yeah, he did. Uh, good deal. I mean, good for you. Because I fished those couple ever starts at Havasu. And it was cool because, like, I had some really good boaters, but, like, they were just never on them when I drew them. You know, so it just it sucked. I think in those two tournaments, I caught one fish. Okay, dude, I was ready to kill him at the end of the first day on that tournament because he took the. I just bought a new boat, um, and he took that boat and came back with a busted windshield <laughs> from hitting the waves and stuff. And I, I kind of ripped his ass pretty good that night, you know. And <laughs> little did he know what was coming down the road. Oh yeah, <laughs> worse than that. I, oh god, uh-uh. the, the next morning it's still coming too, <laughs> dude. The next morning. I'm sitting up there at camp watching, you know, these guys all take off, and they've been gone about an hour, and here comes a park ranger with his lights and siren and then a couple ambulance and a fire truck and everything. I'm like, what the hell's going on? And I walked down to the ramp where they were all parked. Well, a boater had taken off and had a heart attack driving his boat in that water. And, no way. And, and died driving under power. And Are you serious? Yeah, dude. Is that the first tournament you did? Yeah. And it was like me, huge, dude. And I, I mean, waves that will... You know, it's sc- it gets scary fast. It, it it can get bad in a hurry, and so this guy, I'm like, what the hell happened? So I go down there, and here's his dead man. You know, and I'm like, oh crap. You know, and then I'm thinking maybe I shouldn't have ripped his ass so bad. <laughs> but he didn't break anything else on the boat that time. So that's scary. I oh, never yeah. heard about that. Either. Yeah, yeah. And I'm sure because you guys live on the river, it's it's a different, whole different animal too. Yeah, like, you know. Where you get a lot of party people crashing Dude. into each other and stuff. Wakeboard boats, man. Really? Well, yeah. I hate them. I freaking hate them. It's like every time you want to go to an area, there's a wakeboard boat in there just freaking ripping it up. That was in jet skis. Yeah. Freaking lake lice. <laughs> lake lice. <laughs> yeah, he invents cuss words out there, but I, I'm like, Dude, just, they're just having fun like we are. Chill out, you know? <laughs> they should go do it somewhere else. Yeah. Away from me. <laughs> um, so uh, that first tournament, did you? what did you do to re- like gather yourself after that i kind of took a step back you know and that's when i started fishing the bass nations okay uh which was it's kind of like a pro-am deal but it's on a break that down i don't know much about is that the opens pretty much no no it's like the level below that okay so so you would uh it goes it goes uh nations opens and then elites elites. yeah okay so you'd have like uh in the nations you sign up as a boater or a co and they do the draw you draw your co's whatever and they have six qualifiers in arizona like up north they have one qualifier it's a one-day deal and top 10 makes it the state team but it would be a better idea to go up north and do it right (laughs) save some money but um no so you fish the six qualifiers in arizona you get one throw out so the points for state team are based off of your best five tournaments and in order to be on the state team you got to be top 10 in points every year okay and i've fished them this is my fifth year fishing them and I've made state team four of the five years so far. How was your first year? Uh, that was pretty fun. Well, actually, the first year I made state team, but I didn't know you had to do community service to be eligible. What do you mean? Yeah, well, it's like a the state deal. You have to do community service, like go clean up the lake and stuff like that. Really? For like four hours a day or something like Just that. Just for Arizona? Yeah. yeah. Does California have that too? Does California have a federation? Yeah, oh, yeah. pretty much every state does. And that's up north probably clear mm-hmm. lake that way, huh? Yeah, I think they're more like central okay but um so yeah i didn't do my community service because i didn't know about it so i made the team but i wasn't eligible so i got off the list so you would have made it five years if you didn't yeah oh so it was not because if you didn't make is because you didn't do the community i'm service. an idiot and didn't read it into it you know i'm just like oh yeah let's go fishing this will be fun you know <laughs> but uh i went the next year which was 2016 i qualified for the team or no 17 17 i qualified for the team and regionals so the state team if you qualify like in 2017 
the regional championship is in 2018. Okay. And that's when we went to the second time I went to Clear Lake for so the regionals. Then what changed this time around? So we went up there and it just, I kind of was more comfortable, more relaxed and kind of just knew where I stood, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think cause before I was kind of big headed, you know, had a little bit of success in team tournaments with other guys and they kind of just held my hand through it, you know? And yeah. Yeah. I jumped in too soon, but I went up there and I kind of had more of a grasp on things and I didn't do that good in that tournament, but good enough to like keep my head right. You know, uh, did you have a different plan of attack than before? Yeah. Or were you kind of confident in the crankbait again? No, because when we won that deal with the 10XD, that was in October, and we went in May okay. this time. So what May. Was your, what was your go-to that time? Everywhere I go, the first thing I'm going to try to do is go find shallow water to go flip a frog. Okay. That's <laughs> everywhere I go. You're a frog guy then. That's it, dude. More of a flipper. I, yeah. I'm a flipping machine, dude. I freaking <laughs> love that stuff. But, uh, so yeah, we just ran around the north end of the lake and Rodman slew and stuff like that and just flipped in frog the whole tournament. And I mean, like I said, I did decent. I think I finished in the top 15, which Arizona, so that thing, it's a three day tournament. The top two guys from each state fish the third day. Whether, like, there was 110 boats in that. If I'm in 100th place and the nine other guys from Arizona are behind me, I get to fish the third day. Nice. And the first two days, though, they take every state's weight combined. And whoever wins with a total weight, back then you want a boat. The state. The does. state. The state. The state team. And so then the state team, they share that boat later on? or how They sell work? it. They sell it and split the money to okay. the state team. Okay. So we, Arizona won the boat that year. Nice. Because I think out of the 10 guys, there was like six or seven of us in the top 15. Oh, wow. Yeah. So you got to fish the third day. I right? got to fish the third day. And I don't, I don't think I, I didn't get a check. But How does it work? What if you do first for your team? Do you get anything out of that? First for your team? Uh, that's when you go to the national championship. You okay. qualify. Wow. Okay, so that year you, you guys did okay. Yeah. Well, and the guy, a guy from Arizona won that tournament that year. Oh, no way. Who was so, that? Uh, I think his name was uh, Jacob Scholl. Did he keep going? Yeah, he went on to the nationals. And I don't, I don't know how he even did on there. but Okay. Yeah. So the, that year you kind of figured out a game plan somewhat? Yeah, it kind of opened my eyes a little bit so I can understand it a little more. And then the next year, went back through, qualified again. I went to Lake Shasta, which is a beautiful lake. It's fun, but not much to flip and frog up there, so, <laughs> which that's fine. But uh, I did terrible. I didn't even make the third day cut on that lake. Why so? I just You catch like 50, 60 fish a day, and they're all like exactly 14 inches long and weigh a pound and a quarter. And... I just could never figure out how to catch a big one. And was it, is it a finesse lake more? I still power fished. Really? I was throwing a spinner bait and a big wake bait and stuff, just trying to catch a big one. Yeah. You'd be amazed. You throw a 10 inch freaking Johnny rat and <laughs> a one pound spot will come up and eat it. Right. Just insane. That was talking to Gary key about it. And he's like the rat guy. And he was talking yeah. about it. I'm like, man, some of the stuff he's like, I throw it all day, dude. I love that rat. Yeah. That's a great, great tool. Yeah. But um, so that one you really ate it on that one. Came yeah, back, had to re re uh, think that one. I was again. I was pretty pissed. As to any point now, like anymore, I don't get spun out. I just get mad. Like it pisses me off. Mm -hmm. You know. So I was pretty pissed after that one. But like it's kind of like motivating. So, and then I skipped a year, and then I qualified in 2020, and that's when they had regionals at Havasu last year. So that was your bread and butter. I'm like, oh, dude, we're going to smash it. <laughs> yeah. you know, it's going to be awesome. Dude, I got my teeth kicked in. What Now, what happened now? I mean, how, how did you get – this is your home lake. Dude, I went to this – it's like the home lake curse, you know. You hear about that, and I, was, I think I just got a little little too ambitious, you know, like, oh, dude, I'm going to freaking – these guys don't stand a chance, you know. And got I just – cocky, man. Yep. <laughs> and – I just, nothing worked out, you know, I just, it wasn't even that I was losing, I just was not getting bites. Like, it was just, everything was different, dude. Yeah. Like, cause like the river, if we get a lot of rain in the winter time, that river will kind of get dirty. But if we don't get rain, like we haven't in the last three years, it's crystal clear. And that makes it freaking very, very hard to flip. Very hard. Do you have to change your, do you change your lineup a lot when you get it really close, crystal clear? I probably should, but I set the hook like a 
freaking angry gorilla. So <laughs> I flip with 80 pound braid. You won't change it. Just always no, 80 pound. 80 no. pound. And I still catch them out of that clear water with it. Cody Spets is like, dude, what the? How do you do he's that, like, man? He's like, you're way too heavy with the line. I'm yeah. from California, dude. Yeah. He told me, I, I fished with him and he's like, he was like, what do you flip with? I'm like, oh, eight foot extra heavy, you know, three quarter ounce weight, 80 pound braid, big old hook. He's like, he's like, I flip with like a seven, four, like heavy 15 pound line, like a two watt. And I'm like, oh no, oh, that's not flipping, dude. That's just dragging a bait around. Yeah. They like, sent him some new Phoenix rod, dude. You can shoot pull with that thing, dude. Yeah, the what, what one are you using for flipping? super flipper? Really? Yeah. Okay. I heard that's a really good flipping stick. It, the guys from dope. the Delta said the same thing. It's freaking sweet. Yeah. But, uh, didn't yeah. work out that time though. When no, you... <laughs> definitely did not work out. I think I caught four fish the first day, and then they canceled day two because of wind. And then the final day, I caught one fish. Damn. So, it was it was rough. Like, like I said, you know, my first two years fishing the proams, I think I fished seven or eight of them, and I caught a check in two of them. You know, that's it's rough. So then, we come to the next year. This which year. Is, this is your this is your year. Yeah. Um, what what all changed? Like what? Something changed, Dude. you know what I'm saying? Did you change your fishing style? Did you change your line? Did you change what techniques you're using? What kind of came together? Mojo of the boat, dude. <laughs> <laughs> so that's how it all happened. Uh, at Lake Mead in 2020 in the U.S. Open, I hit a rock pile, and because I have a 520 Ranger, mm -hmm. I hit a rock pile, and it like totaled my motor. Did you much. did you get hurt or anything? No. Oh, okay. No, it just screwed up a bunch of stuff. It broke my motor mounts and stuff like that. So. I was out of that boat. My grandpa had a 198 Ranger aluminum and he drove up from Texas and he's like, I, here's a boat for you until you get yours fixed, you know? Oh, wow. And so I started fishing out of that. And is that what you're fishing out of now? For now I'm getting a, I got a new four stroke okay. for that white boat. It'll be, but it'll do you be, like that? The aluminum? That suits me, man. <laughs> no graphs, no spot this is lock. The cool thing is I, I, I said about the Yuma when I'm, I'm here, everyone has little trackers like 16, 17. To yep. get to get in, I guess where you got to get in. That's what, yeah, this is my insane. favorite place in the world to fish down here, over Clear Lake. People are gonna get so fucking pissed when I come out with these episodes because I feel like this it's its own community down here. It's a secret, and no one really. It's like a hidden here. gem. Yes. Well, it's intimidating, dude. Yeah. Some I, of the stuff you have to drive your boat through to get, dude, it's scary. Like I took Cody, we fished. So I'll rewind it back to the red boat and how it all started okay. this year. So the MLF. Yeah, go ahead. The MLF was in September on Havasu. It's straight back. Just go straight to the left, all the way back. There you go. The MLF, it was supposed to be at Clear Lake, but low water. They switched it to Havasu in September. And I told Micah, I was like, hey, man, I don't want to fish the U.S. Open. September, punch grass, throw a frog. Like, that is, like, my dream. My favorite time of year yeah. to fish Havasu. Yeah. So he pulled my entry. He put me in the MLF. And I just went out and took the aluminum boat, you know. Like I said, no graphs. So you fished the MLF just for this one tournament? Yeah, just, just to fish it. Cause the Toyota Series? Yeah. Okay. I, fin I figured, you know, it's a good opportunity to try to make some money. And Why didn't you want to fish the Toyota Series anyway? They're more expensive. Really? Okay. A little more expensive. And I like the one bass, man. You okay. know, just kind of represent the West, which it sucks. You know, guys like me are the reason MLF isn't drawing any numbers, you know, because I prefer you don't one. Think that how many, what's the difference on the numbers uh, between? Oh, Dude, it's insane. Man. Really? I think Billy, his numbers kind of went down this year a little bit. But, but how um, many tournaments do they have, uh, one bass? Uh, four now with Lake Mojave on the okay. schedule. Okay. They just changed that? Yeah, it's new this year. That's this new, was right? the first okay. one. Yeah. And uh, so that was the only MLF I fished. And uh, it was awesome, dude. It was freaking way fun. You know, like I said, punching grass, flipping, frogging. What did you take on that one? I got fifth. Okay. Fifth place on that one. And my main goal was like, I just got to make a top 10. Just got to make a top 10. Got to make a top 10. And the first day, I think I had like 10 and a half, 11 pounds. I was like, okay, that sucks. I lost a couple good ones. You know, you I still got headphones. You're good. Okay. I was like, I know I can do it. Like, okay, just focus. I need 16 pounds tomorrow. And now what, what was your game? If you don't got to like give away, like I'm looking for blah, 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 blah. But like, mm -hmm. what's your game plan is just to flip. Do you have a secondary? Like you like to follow up with? Uh, so I was starting in a, the same exact cove every day and i'd go through the tulies and i'd go through them once with a frog and i'd turn around and go or i'd go on the edge of them first with a buzz bait and then i'd turn around frog and flip and just like fish it for like the first hour and i'd, I'd left there every day with a limit and god it was just 
but that's just my i mean a small limit like nine ten pounds and then the second day i just lost my big ones i was just punching grass that's all i was doing but like when the sun would come up i'd put everything away i'd have two rods with an ounce and a half weight big heavy line big heavy hook what i like to do just punch grass what a hook and uh do you like do you like a bead on your punch no <laughs> that nope. was the big debate up north <laughs> no no punch skirt uh we actually make a bait okay I don't you and your say, dad make it we make our own okay. people that know they know the people that want to know <laughs> no. so you use your own bait do you what kind of hook do you like to use uh the gamagatsu super well, i think it's like the super heavy cover hook okay because it's Dude, it's like a freaking gaff hook, man. You can't <laughs> bend it. And uh, I don't snell. I probably should, but mm -hmm. I don't because I think a snell slips. Really? So I just tie a double polymer. And then, so, yeah, just went flipping. Uh, the second day, I ran to the same areas, and, like, the first fish I caught was, like, an almost five-pounder. Wow. Like, there we go. And I just ran around and ran around, and I kept, I just had small fish. Two-pounder after two-pounder after two-pounder. And I pulled into one area up in the river, and it was funny because there was two guys. I don't want to say their names. The one guy was coming out, and I'm looking at the grass in the entrance of this bay. I'm like, I need to flip that right there. Did you do, do you know if you see the guy and he's from California, you're like, I'm good. Oh, no. These guys are like rat boats with – they're big time. Okay. Like local guys. The Williams Brothers. No. No, no. <laughs> no, they were out in the lake kicking my ass doing something else. But – um. I'm like, damn, I need to fish that. And this guy comes out and just drives right through the center of that grass pad. I'm like, oh, my God, dude. And I start to go in there, and this other guy just comes off plane and just cuts me off and just cuts right in front of me. And I'm like, back to the woo side, you know, rub your lobes. I'm like, dude, I'm you're ready. You're ready to ram your fucking aluminum. I'm ready to this kill dude. this guy. <laughs> and that was the day I was fishing with Deanna Moreno. Okay. And I'm like, screw it. I'm just going to flip it. I pull up there and punch. And <laughs> he was like 20 yards in front of me. He kept looking back like, what are you doing? You know, and like just fishing and whack, catch a four-pounder. Did you start screaming and hold it up and then like, yeah. No, nope. I just set the hook, boat flipped it, popped it in, threw my small one out, pick up, flip. Dude, in like six flips, I caught and cold every fish I had except that <sighs> big one wow. and weighed, I think it was 16.7. Wow, that's on the second day. That was on the second day. And it was so like nerve-wracking, dude sitting there at the weigh-in just watching the board you know and everybody weighing in weigh everyone. and i'm like okay okay if he has this much he's gonna take me out you know <laughs> and the last guy came up and he he needed like 12 pounds three ounces and it was like 12 one or 12 two but i heard it wrong or something and i'm like god damn it dude i got 11th damn it and then everyone's like no oh, dude you made it and i'm like no i didn't i'm all pissed you know mad and they're like you literally made it look at the screen <laughs> idiot and I was like, holy shit, I did it. You know, yeah. I was all freaking hyped up. And then the third day is when I fished with Rachel and went to the same areas and just both of us, we hammered them uh -huh. all day long, dude. We caught so many freaking fish. It was fun. Just like no big ones. I mean, good fish. Yeah. And it was funny because that second day or the third day, day two, I had 16.7. Day three, I had 16.7. Exactly the same. Exactly the way it's For same. sure cheating. Yeah, no, I'm just kidding. Yeah, I didn't even take him to the release boat. <laughs> but no, so that bumped me from 10th to 5th. And wow. That was, that was pretty cool. Was that, did that kind of, so since you took that time off from uh, the, the Bass as a federation, right? Mm -hmm. uh, did that kind of pump you up a little? You know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah, you know, it kind, of, it kind of gave me a little confidence boost, you know, knowing I can't hang with these guys, you know? Yeah. I can do it, you know, not to sound cocky or anything, but like yeah. it, it definitely bumped up my confidence i'm sure you and, beat some guys that you respect too if you got a fifth yeah you know what i'm saying there's probably guys in there you're like damn i beat him oh yeah you know? dude like you know you pull up and you're thinking of like your justin kurz and sean bailey's yeah. on Havasu. you're like well great <laughs> and, but it just you know blind squirrel finds a nut every now and then yeah and then yeah so i fished that and then i fished a couple more little tournaments after that and nothing serious and then Cody, actually, we're, we made a plan to fish a tournament down here in January. Mm -hmm. And me and him came down and pre-fished the weekend before. And we, uh, we, I found him. Found him good. And I told Cody, I'm like, he's like, what do I need to bring? I'm like, dude, you need two rods. Like, we're going to smash them. And he's like, all right, all right. <laughs> and we freaking came down here and we just, dude, we wailed on him all freaking day. 
and there's a backwater. I'm not like the locals. I don't know the exact names of all of them. So me and all my buddies, we have our nicknames for them. And I call this one windshield because mm-hmm. I've literally oh, broken. God. I've probably broken 30 windshields on boats going Getting into in this. There. Dude, <laughs> it's gnarly. And I told Cody, I was like, we need to go to windshield, man. Like the school that we were on just kind of died. I was like, we need to go to windshield. So we freaking run down the river. And he's like, where is it? And I come off plane. He's like, where's the entrance? It's right there. He's like, where? That's that straight wall of cane. I'm like. It, it's right there and <laughs> we freaking plow through there and it dude he's like what the hell oh, <laughs> i had him on bad. the front like pushing <laughs> like he's laying on his back like pushing down on the cane so we can go through it and we got in i broke my windshield and uh we got in there and freaking it was dead was how like, big oh, are these so when you get into these areas how big do they get some of them are some of them are like full lakes like they're giant back there but other ones like windshield it's probably small pond yeah okay it's probably five or six yeah maybe back there it's enough you can fish you know yeah and we get back there and it was like dead and i was pissed i'm like dude there's always fish in here and i i promise you dude we, there was nobody else had been in there all year yeah mm-hmm. nobody because like you can tell when you're one of the first ones into those backwaters like by now has probably all of that stuff's blown open yeah but yeah. um yeah so we got in there and it was dead and I'm like you know what and cody just randomly just bombed his freaking rattle trap out in the middle of the bay and catches like a two pounder I'm like oh there you go it didn't help us we already had like 19 pounds yeah and he throws back and uh I'm like oh, that was cool and i i pick up a, a slide swimmer i throw it out there because there's a big tree out in the middle of it and i'm bringing it through there and something smashes it I'm like oh damn i didn't get one and i see his line coming right behind it and he brings it to the tree and pops it and just bows down and He's like, oh, dude, I got it. It's a big one. And he's like, oh, it's a catfish. It's a catfish. It's got to be. And it comes up. And I'm like, dude, that's a bass, man. And we freaking netted it. It was a five. But I kind of jumped the gun. Before that, we started in Martinez, which is the lake right there. Yeah. And I had some little spots I wanted to go crank around, and they didn't pay out. And it was a place where we didn't even pre-fish. Like, I knew it was there, but I just never really thought anything about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. And my buddy, who was down there with us the weekend before, he smashed him in there. And he... He told me the night before when I was driving down there, he goes, dude, you need to go check that out if you need a fish. So I told Cody after we hit that first spot, I'm like, let's go over there. Dude, <laughs> we crushed them. Crushed them. I think I went like 12 casts in a row with a crankbait. I mm-hmm. caught fish. And they were wow. all four pounders. Yeah. And then Cody, same thing. He just randomly throws one out in the middle of nowhere. And he catches one. It was a 6-8. God dang. Yeah. You guys were on them then. Yeah, we had almost 23 pounds. We had like 22-7 oh, or something like that. We got third. Was this just a local tournament? Yeah, a local okay. team tournament around Arizona. So and you got third? Who got first? Uh, I can't remember what their names were, but they had like right at 25. Oh, my God. And then Mike Williams and his partner had 23-something. This Damn. place is a factory down here, man. You, it is. Yeah. The bags you're pulling up. I mean, have you fished any California tournaments? Nah. Cody's, <laughs> Cody's asked me to come over and fish a couple of Diamond Valley ones, but I. Yeah, he catch 14 pounds. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. With him. Yeah, he's a stick. That's dude. two fish for him. <laughs> but, yeah, so that one, that was another confidence boost. You know, third okay. place, yeah. first one of the year. You know, yeah. I'm like, well, I got to keep it rolling. And then we had the Arizona Open on Havasu. And now what was your mentality going into that one? Because you were kind of, this, this is your deal. You know, the year before is when I got my ass kicked. Yeah. And. So I'm kind of having an open mindset. I'm like, okay, I know where they're at in the river. They're always there. I'm an idiot if I go up there and try to pre-fish. They're in the same spots every year, eat the same bait. I need to start trying to do something different. You know, I'm in my aluminum boat. I'm not in my big glass boat with my graphs and stuff, so I can go find stuff in the lake, you know. So I'm like, well, I'm going to run to the other river. So I, <laughs> I drove all the way down there, and I found some fish, and I was like, man, this is freaking good. Yeah. So day one, I brought his boat because it was a long run. I didn't want to. Go down there in the freaking aluminum, you know. And how far was the run on that one? I don't even know how far it is from Windsor to the Bill. It's like that takes about twenty five minutes to get okay. down there doing sixty. Oh, man, that's far, dude. And so I freaking run down there. It's freaking cold, and I get down there, and the fish I was catching in practice were like three and four pounders. Mm-hmm. I get down there, I catch a limit in like twenty minutes. Me and my co, and we have like eight pounds, and I'm like, man. I gotta wait for the wind to start blowing in this, you know, all this yeah, stuff. And yeah. it started blowing and we just kept catching them. They're just little. I'm like, I'm out, dude. I should have left sooner. I should have left sooner. Cause I went up in the river after we drove across the freaking Atlantic Ocean trying to get up there because <laughs> the wind was howling. And we get up there and I flipped for like 
20 minutes and call out three of my fish and i was like oh it's time to go i had like 13 pounds 12 and i was pretty pissed you know i was in like because i caught him that day dude Mm -hmm. i was in like like 28th or something like that and then they canceled day two because of the wind yeah i remember hearing about that yeah and that was pretty I was hectic. so pissed at him because I, I always like fishing that south end of the lake because there's nobody there. You know? Yeah, yeah. And he's like, dude, there's no big fish down there. That, you know, and I'm like, yeah, there's some decent ones, but, you know, nobody's going to win much from the south end, you know. And I couldn't understand why he went down there. <laughs> dude, you know, but he, yeah. he did. But anyway. So the next day, I switched boats. He met me between Kingman and Havasu, and we swapped boats. I got the old tin tub back. Got my push poles out and I'm ready. And I drove up in the river and I fished a handful of my spots and it just wasn't jiving. You know, I was like, uh-oh. And I push pulled into one backwater that I don't think anybody had been in all winter because the water was too low. And we teed off on him back there, dude. Just hammered him. And I think I left there with like 15 something pounds. Dude. And then I just went and started flipping and it was just crushing him, dude. Just, <laughs> it was just, it was dumb. You know, I didn't really upgrade, but like, it would have been upgrades for the day before. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And day two if we could have fished, you know. So I came back in, and that jumped me up to, like, 18th place, and I got a check. So which, you're stoked. Yes and no. I was, I was very <laughs> fortunate, very you happy were, that I got a check. because you knew you could have done better. Yeah. Okay. But that's the name of the game. You know, what happens if I go down to the bill on day one, and they're there, and I catch 18, 20 pounds. Yeah, no. You know, it's, you got, you get, sometimes you got to take gambles and go oh, out of your comfort nice, zone. Yeah. So, but that didn't... That was all right. And then the next one after that, that was the one that meant something. To the me. one. That was the one. That was the Bass Nation Western Regional. Oh, yeah. And it's funny because it, practicing for the Arizona Open, you know, we, was going, we were going around up shallow looking at Tuleys, you know, and I had my brother-in-law with me. He fishes a co. Mm-hmm. And he caught one fish. He caught like a two-and-a-half pounder up shallow. And I was like, that's kind of early for them up here right now, but that's cool. And... I just thought about it like that that one fish was in my head for like two weeks and i knew it dude i, I freaking knew it i'm like they're gonna be in those tulies i know they are <laughs> i know they're gonna be there yeah. and day one i went out and it was kind of overcast and calm and that kind of sucked because you need the sun to get up in the tulies mm-hmm. and so they were kind of out and i just kind of scrounged up a limit in the lake i didn't even i never went to the river i stayed in the lake and i got like 12 pounds i was in 12th place after first day Nice. And that's the nation deals. So you got to beat the other guys from Arizona. Well, the guy from Arizona was leading it with 19 pounds. And here I am with 12. And then <laughs> another guy, he had like 16 or 17 was in the top five. So I'm like, eh, well. Time to grind. I, I seen some big ones that day. <laughs> yeah. I seen them. I knew I was around them. I'm like, well, all right. So I launched. And that next day, my co-angler, he was from Oregon. Because you can't fish with guys from your state. Oh, okay. It's pretty cool. So I fished with a guy from Oregon. And he was telling me, he was like, yeah, man. It was every time I fish these guys with people, he goes, I'm like the lucky charm. My pros always catch them. And I'm like, well, do I need to like rub your head? Like, I don't want to, I don't know what I need to do to get this, you know? And he's hey, like, you got it, you got it. Yeah. Yeah. I know some backwaters are pretty quiet, but uh, <laughs> we freaking, we go out and I'm just telling him, I catch my first fish. It's like a two pounder. I'm like, man, I haven't caught a five pounder in so long. And I just pick up and I'm flipping in it, dude. Like, I'm watching other people, they're fishing similar, but they're just, they're not doing it, you know? And it's not something, like, you can mimic, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, if you have a lot of confidence in one thing that you do, you can tell somebody to go exactly right there and go do the same thing, and they're not going to catch them. No. You know? No. That's my confidence, so I go there, and I'm like, I'm just, the words come out of my mouth, I haven't caught a big one in a while, boom, set the hook, and it's, like, in the tulies, like, way back in there, all bundled up, and... It's like 35 degrees in the morning. It's freezing. And there's a no net rule in those tournaments. So I'm like, oh, dude, there's a giant. And your co angler can help you. So I'm like, can you come up here and grab him? And he comes up there and just grabs him through the wad of two leaves and pulls him in. And I'm like, well, there's my five pounder. There's my kicker for the day. And I went to the next Thule patch, flip a three and a four. I go to the next Thule patch, I flip a four and a half. So and then I go to that. You're like on it. I have like 18 pounds at like 830 in the morning. And I'm stoked. I'm like, dude, oh, yeah, we're going to do it. We're going to do it. Like, that's good. I'm just going to go kind of pre-fish, you know, see where they're at. And I pull into one spot. It was funny. I flip into this mat and just hammers in. I set the hook. I'm like, dude, that's a freaking giant, man. Get the net. Well, we don't have a net. Yeah. And 
It comes out. It's like an 18-pound flathead catfish. Oh, wow. <laughs> you thought you had your record right Dude, there. Dude, I thought I had like digit. a 10. <laughs> oh, damn it. Oh, well. And then I told my co I'm like, well, because he caught one. Um, I was making fun of him all day because he had a two-ounce weight. I'm flipping half and three quarters. I'm like, man, you don't, you don't need that. He goes, I paid 12 bucks for it. I'm going to use it. <laughs> you know? And he caught one on it. And I'm like, well, and there were three fish limits. So I'm like, dude, I know a couple areas you can go catch, you know, you store your drop shot and you can catch two fish. Yeah. And we pull into this one spot and there's a little tule patch right there. I've never even really fished. I just kind of, I'm going to flip right here. Just keep throwing your drop shot at that brush pile. I pull over there and flip in it. The whole tule patch shakes, set the hook, pull this six and a half pounder out, oh boat, flip gosh. it in the boat. That put me up to 21 and a half. You're I'm like shaking. You're like, going oh crazy. my gosh, this is it. Dude, I boat flip and that guy's like, holy shit, dude. And like, <laughs> we're like hugging and high-fiving and stuff, you know? I'm like, this is freaking awesome, you, you, know? Drop, you dropped your knees again like your dad's hell. Yeah, uh-huh. <laughs> Asshole. But, and then he's, well, then he catches a fish off that spot. He does. It's like a two-pounder. I get it for him and, like, cool, I got one more spot, man. And by then, I'm just chilling, dude. I had one rod on the deck. I'm just cruising around. I was running the trolling motor, just letting him fish. And... I'm like, well, I'm going to make a cast right there. So I stand up there, and he's throwing his drop shot over here, and I just throw my cast there and reeling it in. I'm throwing a swim jig, bringing it in, boom, smashes in another four and a half pounder. Boat oh flipping and have freaking 22 and a half. You call, that one even called one out too, as well. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. my gosh, dude. Yeah. So 20, this is day two. Two, two. okay. Moving day. <laughs> <laughs> and I came in, and you know, it's so cool in those things. You have bass track. Yeah. So, like, you text Bassmaster, you know. One dash. Were you sandbagging? No. I, I kind of was. I kind of <laughs> was. I didn't submit that last four pounder. I left it at twenty one, and uh, I come in and you know it was it was just so cool. You know, like you come in and everyone everyone's that like weighed in looks at bass track. Like, oh my god, dude, you smashed them. Yeah. You know, and you come in and there's like people like at your boat like wanting to see you bag your fish, and you're like, yeah, dude. And you're like, <laughs> check me out, you know. And it's just such a good feeling. I would literally wish everybody could experience yeah, that at yeah. some point in their life fishing. That was fun. And, you know, I wait in, you come to the, sto- the stage, and John Stewart's like, oh, this is the guy that everyone's been talking about. And you dump him on the thing, and bam, 22 3. And you're just like, that jumped me from 12th to 1st. And how nervous were you? Very nervous, because <laughs> the guy right behind me was three or four ounces behind me, and he was oh, from Arizona. Oh, man. So and I'm a stick. In a stick. I'm stressed, dude. Okay. And so I went home that night, drank a couple beers, <laughs> de- decompressed, just mellowed out, went out, retied my two rods that I was going to use. and So you, you're going to stick to the game plan no matter what. That's it. I'm going to live and die shallow. I do every tournament. And I just went back and I pulled right around. I, everyone's running off, you know, and it was so cool. Like day three, you know, they have you line up the top ten boats at the dock. Boat one's out first. You know, and they're playing like the Eminem "Lose Yourself" song, and I'm all freaking dude, oh, like, which is just like a contact sport. I'd punch somebody in the mouth right now, you know, <laughs> all jacked up, and I just ran right around the corner, like, I. By the time I got on plane, I was already coming off. I go over there and like three flips in, I catch a four and a half. Oh my like, gosh! Here we go. Yeah, we're doing it again, and then I lost one. Damn it! I go like three hours without a bite. And I catch another four pounder. I go another hour without a bite. And I catch another one, like a three. I'm like, damn it, dude, this sucks. Like, and I just knew I hadn't fished the river at all. I could just go up the river and go flip my couple spots and for sure catch a couple two yeah. pounders. Yeah. I fished the river for like two and a half hours. Didn't have a bite. Didn't even see a fish. So I was like, screw this, I'm out. Ran back to the lake, went to the same. There was one tule patch. I think I caught four of my big ones on day two. All of my fish on day one out of that one two leap patch. Four of my fish, we call it the jerk bait spot. <laughs> like, I can say that because nobody else other than yeah, my buddies know, know about yeah. that. They don't know about the wheat pasture or anything else. No. <laughs> like I said, they probably have real names, but these are our nicknames yeah, we give them. Yeah, yeah. That's and the best thing to do because then no one's going to know what it is exactly. We know what we're talking about. You can openly talk about it. Yes. Though. And I ran back there, and I flipped another one that was like four. Like, okay, that's, that's good. And I had like 30 minutes. So I ran right around the ramp right there. There's a couple tule patches, and I'm sitting there flipping, and I flip into this one mat, and nothing. I go to reel it out, and like a five or six just comes blowing through the mat trying to eat it. Oh, my dude. So I reel up, <laughs> and I flip back in there, and he eats it. 
I said, look, like, I got her, dude. It's a big one. It's a big one. And dude, it just gets all watered up in the twoies and just comes off. Oh. And I look at my time. I'm like, I got five minutes. Like, that was it. Yeah. I just lost the tournament. Yeah. And I idle in, and I'm pissed. Pretty much, I'm, like, discouraged. Like, someone, I look like someone kicked my dog, probably. Yeah. And I come in. Steve, the guy was in second behind me. I'm like, how'd you do, Steve? He's like, got one fish. I'm like, you only got one? He's like, yeah, that's it. I see my other buddy, Jesse, who was in the top five as well from Arizona. I'm like, how'd you do, Jesse? He's like, I got like three. Damn, huh? That's, dude, that's not too bad. <laughs> you know, and then I start talking around, and everyone's like, dude, it sucked today, man. I'm like, yeah, I only got four. You know, they're good ones. And they made me weigh in last because oh. I was leading it. So I'm just sitting out there in my boat, and I'm just like, dude, that was the longest weigh-in <laughs> of my life <laughs> ever. And they finally, they told, they sent a guy out there. He's like, hey, okay, bring your fish to the bump tanks. So I come over there and sitting there at the bump tanks, and the guy who was in third place was right in front of me. I was like, how'd you do, man? He's like, I only got four fish. I got like 14 pounds, though. He beat me. He beat yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. And I seen him dump his fish into the thing, and I'm like, 14 pounds my ass you know and <laughs> and you love that when you see someone i got a 10 i'm like that ain't 10 dude yeah yeah and then he even said it too he's like ah, i kind of big item i think you know and i'm like well that sucks for you <laughs> like he was joking with me i was joking with him. i was like well yeah, that kind of yeah. sucks for you then and uh at that time i knew i had it i knew i did because i was doing all the math in my head of what my rapala scale said i had were you were you there with him no i was in texas You're, watching it on the internet oh man so you weren't there to kind of see it. that no, sucks no and uh and i freaking i, was, I told the guy at the way and i'm like hey there's like three people left i gotta go to the bathroom real quick can you hold my fish he's like yeah I'm, i went over I'm there crap my pants right now if i can't <laughs> dude it was so cool all my buddies in my group chat i go over there and i text them all i'm like log on to the bassmaster website i'm about to win this bitch <laughs> <laughs> and they're like no way and they all freak my phone's blowing up and i get up on the stage and i look out and I see my girlfriend, my mom, my girlfriend, my little kid, yeah. little Bo. He's little standing Bo. out there, and my boss, you know, like 15 or 20 yeah, of, like, yeah. my really good friends that I didn't even know they were there. I'm like, dude, this is awesome, you know? And yeah. Freaking weighs the fish. It was, like, just under 13 pounds for four. I won it by four pounds, and that just. That was, so, that, what's the winnings off that, and, like, what does that throw you in? That was, that was five grand to win. Okay. And uh, uh, like the first first place for the state, obviously. And in, in that instance, you know, two of the three guys from Arizona were in the top five. So wow. at that point, to be able to move on, you had to win the whole damn thing, you know. Yeah. And that's what I kind of set my mind to, you know. Mm -hmm. It was weird, man. Before the tournament, just in the parking lot, I just 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 mellow, dude. Just like. You know, not thinking about stuff, just like had a clear mind, like, man, just had a weird gut feeling, like, I'm going to catch them this week. Yeah. Like, I, it just, it was weird, man. Like, just, I couldn't, I can't even explain it. Just like, no, that's, I mean, to win something like that's amazing, and you've been working for it for a minute. Yeah. You know? So it all came together. Yep. So then, how did, what does that lead you to now? The Bass Nation National Championship, the one Matty Wong won last year. You fished against him in that one? No, I didn't. No. Steve, Steve, the guy that was right behind me in second, he fished it last okay. year. Okay. Or, no, he didn't get to go because he had COVID, so they sent another guy. Oh, wow. They called me and asked me, like, two weeks before the tournament because Steve couldn't go. And I said, I can't. I can't that short of a notice, you know. Because but, of work and stuff? Yeah. Yeah. So they called another guy. He's like, hell, yeah, I'll go. And he actually did good. But, um, yeah, we're going to that one in Pickwick, November. No way. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm So what's the plan on that? Are you going to go pre-fish? I'm going to, yeah. We're going to go. I'm going to go there for, like, two weeks. What's and the big change? So since you're a West Coast guy, what changes up from the West Coast to, to, you know, when you start heading to lakes over there? I don't know. Everybody I know that says they go do it said the fishing's easier back there. But I have a hard time believing that because I think there's just as much pressure. There might just be more fish. I don't know. But uh, it's it's kind of intimidating a little bit, you know. That's the first time I've been back east since high school. I was 17, yeah. 18, you know. And it's kind of intimidating, but... I'm ready for it. You know, it'll be cool. I've looked into a lot of Pickwick. You know, it's it's a river. It's not even really a lake. It's more like a river. You know, there's current through it. It's a narrow Which lake. Which helps you because you're used to fishing the river system. Yeah, but, but it's different, dude. Like, yeah. you got to fish offshore and stuff like that. But, like, I'm hoping there's grass. If there's grass there, 
I've been watching a lot of videos and reading up on it. You know, if there's grass, I think I can go punch and flip, you know, and hopefully catch them doing that. If not, I'll have to adjust and do something else. I know there's a lot of smallmouth, you know, like swing heads and scroungers and stuff like that. People catch them on that stuff there. So what, uh, so say you're going to go to a new location just mm-hmm. yourself. What are, what is the first thing you're going to go to is use at your fish finder? Like, what are you going to start using just to find fish? Well, it kind of all just depends, you know, first thing, if I, if I go to Lake Mead, first thing I'm going to do is what if you're going to a lake you've never been to, I'd say you just do a little research. Yeah. I mean, I'd look it up and I'd look into it, you know, kind of, I'd watch YouTube's. I mean, <laughs> they don't, they're not going to tell you exactly where they yeah, are. And you get to see stuff. what the structure you can might just be there. Kind of see how it is and how it fishes, you know, and then read up on it and just, just kind of understand the lake a little bit before you get there. You know what I mean? Do you throw a glides at all during tournament or anything like oh, that? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I throw a glide bait a bunch. Really? Yeah. What a, do you ever get nervous? Because you know like that, or you just know the perfect time of day to do that? Yeah, it's, it's in certain spots. You know, shade lines on poles, around docks and stuff like that. You know, it's just kind of a, it's kind of a gamble sometimes. It's paid off. It's really? paid off big for me a you couple times. You got some times. big ones during tournament? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What's your go-to glide bait? Depths 175. Look at Matt Payne over plugging you. <laughs> you love that thing. Do you do anything different to it? I put feathered treble hooks on it. What do you think that does? Doesn't that mess the swim up? You think? Or I don't think so. No, I, dude. I'm like, like I said before. I used to think about the smallest little details, and nowadays I'm just like, oh, my bait's kind of crooked. Out, screw it. <laughs> Fish are dumb. They'll eat it. You know? Yeah. I just try not to get too wrapped up in my own mind on stuff. So, I I, I personally think because like Lake Mojave, I love throwing a glide bait. A you know, big smallmouth come up and eat it. You know, I think that feather treble hook on there. You know, when they come up next to the boat and kind of just sit there and work it and try to get them to eat it, they'll see those feathers and a little just, more action. You know how many times I've just seen the smallmouth just come up and just like bite the hook. You know, it's it's intense. Dude. Yeah, yeah. So, so what's your uh, what's your PB largemouth? Uh, Nine sixty one on uh, Billy Skinner's cheater. Cheater. That's the deal up here, huh? Yep, I caught it down here too. Um, when did you start using the cheater? Uh, about a week after he came out with it. Really? <laughs> when did he come out with it? 2017. Okay. I mean, I threw, it's similar to like a baby E, and I threw baby E's a lot and stuff like that okay. before that, and then he came out with it, and it just, that bait's bad, dude. Really? It catches them. That's a, that's a whole different thing up here. I think that's made for this location, yeah. huh? It's just like a different look. It's like a, it's like a subsurface frog kind of, you know? Yeah, it's got those weird side, the side, yeah. On, yeah. Little yeah. wings. Yeah, dude, that, that thing's bad. And it's so fun to throw, dude. <laughs> oh, dude, it's a blast. They smash it. It's just a, a different, lot, of, it's lot like, of chasers. Yeah, you get a lot of fish that come out and follow it. But, like, dude, I kind of have little tricks and tips with it. That like, if you get a fish following it, you know, there's little things you can do to kind of get them to eat it sometimes. Yeah. Um, you're sponsored by Phoenix? Kind of, yeah. How did that come, come on? Um, so after, after the regional deal um, – Christian Puga, he worked there. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I seen him at the Arizona Open, and I was joking with him because I had my little Highland Glass fishing shirt on from Micah, and I was like, man, dude, you're missing something right here. He's like, what? I'm like, I got a Phoenix patch. <laughs> and, you know, I'm just messing with him, and he's like, yeah, we'll see. We'll talk about it. And then one regionals, and he texted me. He's like, good job, dude. That's badass. And then we went to uh, – after regionals, the next one – the next pro was Lake Mojave, mm-hmm. the Laughlin Open. And that was a blast, dude. Smallies on beds everywhere. Just it was a slug fest. That, yeah, that took more weight to win at Lake Mojave than it did Clear Lake. Wow, with smallmouth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, Justin Kerr won with sixty six pounds for two or three days. Oh, gosh, dude. I had sixty and got seventh. That's crazy, dude. Yeah, I caught my biggest bag of smallmouth ever though. I had it was twenty two ninety nine. Like a drop of water, I'd had twenty three. You know, <laughs> and my co angler that day. He had big fish of the day on the co side. He had a 6-1 smallmouth. That's huge. Yeah, it was a oh tank. My gosh. I was, out, I was actually wasn't even bed fishing when I seen it. I was out just fishing a point, and I looked down. It was like 25 foot of water because that lake's crystal clear. And I looked down. I seen this gigantic fish on a bed. And I dropped my bait down there, and she eats it. And I hook her. I'm like, dude, it's a giant. It came off. I'm like, damn it. And I watch her swim away. And my co angler's like lines over there. And, dude, she's swimming. And, like, she seen his drop shot and just turned and swam over there and ate it. I was like, oh, my God, he's got her, dude. Yeah. It, like I said, it's a, shared, it's a shared weight. So it's like, get that bitch in, dude. That's yeah. freaking awesome. <laughs> you know? And 
I'd netted it. I'm like, that's a tank, dude. Yeah. That's a tank. Game changer. Yeah. Do you, uh, do you use a live scope or any of that stuff? I don't have any of that. What do you think of it? I wish I had it. Yeah. Tired of getting my ass kicked by people that have it. Except on the river, you don't really need it, huh? No. Nah. All my buddies that got it, one of my buddies, he was like, I got live scope. I'm going to kick your ass now. And I said, let's go fish the river. You can't see the fish in the grass mats and in the tuis with that thing, can you? <laughs> yeah, right. I mean, that's a definitely, that's a hard one because mm-hmm. if you can't afford it, you're just kind of screwed. Yeah. You know? And a lot of people hate it. A lot of people. I do wish, like, some tournaments had, like, restrictions on electronics. You can't fish A-rigs in your tournaments, huh? No. No, no double fluke one. rigs, no A-rigs. But you can use a live scope. Yeah. It doesn't make any sense to me. I think you should be able to throw A-rigs. I wish I, you could. I do. I mean, if you can use, if you can use live scope, why can't you throw an A-rig? Yeah, that's what same I mean. Same deal. Yeah. It's not, I mean, it's not the same deal, but it doesn't, it's not, you're throwing three hooks on it. Yeah. Not doing anything illegal. Well, two in Arizona. Oh, you can only have two? Yeah. No. Oh, it's still effective. Yeah. <laughs> they smash it. But, uh, yeah. That's mm. a that's a hard one. I mean, yeah. But so when you were doing all this, you had your electronics though, right? So this whole time you didn't have your electronics. He's, been, just fishing, nope. he's been fishing that aluminum. Probably. I did it in an aluminum boat with no graphs, no spot lock trolling motor. 18 so months. So you did all this without any electronics, everything. Yeah. Just by feel, just knowing where your stuff's at. Yeah. How deep were you fishing? At which one? Uh, when, when did you, how long were you using your boat? When Did you do it when you won the tournament? Yeah. Oh, so like Havasu, I was in less than four foot of water the okay. whole tournament. All right. Mojave, I mean, I fished in five foot of water and I fished in 45 foot of water. But you ran my boat. I took his home. boat and it wasn't even for the graphs. It was just to have a bigger boat, you know, because that lake gets rough. I didn't, I didn't turn the graphs on on his boat because it was bed fishing and sight fishing. You don't need that crap. And then the other stuff, you know, I was kind of just fishing points. I, I fished them since I was a kid with him. You knew where you're looking I knew, for. I knew where they were at. So I didn't need that stuff. But like going to Pickwick, that's going to be a different story. <laughs> you know? So this is, this is my question is, do you think that there's there's a little bit of loss when you start using electronics more? For instance, if you use the live scope more. Yeah. Your feel, you're looking at a screen the whole time. You're not going to feel some of those things, you know? Yeah, absolutely. 100%. I think it takes the natural instinct of, like, a guy just flat out being able to know how to catch fish. I, I tell you, I, my personal experience, I, I got to fish a couple times as a co in the Cal Open. And I was fortunate enough to get on some guys' boats that have that. And it's, it's wonderful technology. But I've also been on boats with same guys that depend on it solely, where they're, they can't, they forget to fish the banks. They forget about flipping. They, they're too focused on their graphs that they're not fishing their instincts anymore. Um, and it, it, you know, as a co angler, it sucks because you, you know, we go and pre fish and, and I'm fishing with the <laughs> king of the shallow water here and we're, we're catching fish and I get on a boat with a guy and, I'm not going to put him on the stuff that Frankie's on or the guys we're camped with is, you know, but you're out there and you know, you can catch fish, but you don't want to share that information with the dude on your boat because you're going to put him on what your guys are on. And, and but you know, you spend too much time. We spent too much time looking at that graph. And then you're and, in deep water and you look yeah. at the graph and you're throwing, you know, 50 feet deep, a drop shot or whatever. To a might. specific you, spot. You yeah. know, a, a case in point, I was up there one year with a gentleman and, and great guy, great fisherman too. And we're fishing way offshore. And for whatever reason, our boat blew in just enough where I was able to throw the bait that him and I make up under a dock, caught a five and a half pound bass. And, and. I'm thinking, okay, that should tell us something right there that we're too far offshore. They're up there under the shadows and, and bright sunny day, you know. And but no, we were we were hooked to drop shots and fishing, and then that works. Don't get me wrong, but <laughs> when you um, catch a fish like that, it should probably give you a clue to go try something yeah. else. Turn off your damn graph. I, I, yeah. I mean, I couldn't hit that with the with the Johnny Rat. I couldn't throw that heavy rat all the way up. That's how far offshore we were. And, and this guy's like, where'd you catch that? And I really came under that dock over there 55 yards away, you know, and <laughs> I barely felt him bite, you know. Um, and that, that, so yeah, they're, 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 they're a tool, you know, and, and you, you need to use that. They're excellent to have, but, and it takes a lot of the guesswork out and, and shortens yeah. your hunt, but it's, it's not a cure all. Yeah. So I think there's a time and a place and, there's definitely a time where you need that and like like that tournament that uh bass pro shops whatever put on it at table rock yeah 
I'm pretty sure everybody in the top 10 was using live scope. Everybody. Mm-hmm. Well, how many in the club tournaments are using live scope? Nobody, because nobody can afford it. <laughs> well, I think in SoCal, there's a lot of dudes that yeah. use live scope. Really? Yeah. But I mean, none of ours. Our club's called the Redneck Bass Club. <laughs> yeah. My kind of club. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty cool. <laughs> um, so, your two techniques frog, flipping, what else? Like, you really Just use power fishing, man. I love throwing a square bill, I like throwing a spinner bait. Okay. You know, so what I'm going to ask you is recommendations on rods for like your flip and your frog rod. Uh, maybe three different rods of the three techniques you like to throw a lot. So flipping, I do use the seven foot eleven uh, extra heavy super flipper okay. that Phoenix makes, and then a frog rod. Uh, I like the seven four M one extra heavy. Okay. It's kind of probably heavier than a lot of people like. Like I said, I I hammer them when I eat it, dude. I don't let them. I let them know who they're biting, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and then for like a like a spinner bait. I really like the, I throw my jigs on it too. It's like my kind of everything rod. It's the 7.2 M1 heavy. The extra Do you like fast. a lot of the M1 stuff then? Yeah, I think those are my favorite ones they make. What reason? They're just light and they just, I don't know. I just. A little more parabolic too. Huh? Yeah, yeah, they're nice. They're nice rods. Mm-hmm. And it, but, they're, but they're extra heavies. They're extra. They're, like you said, you can shoot pool with them, dude. They're <laughs> yeah, freaking yeah. broomsticks. <laughs> yeah, That's I got what a I couple like. I use for the Calico. I use a lot of the Ultra Symbi Classic stuff. Yeah, see, I got I got a X, I got an X twelve, X thirteen, and an X fourteen. I love the X fourteen, dude. It's bad. It's yeah. so bad. I just caught my, I caught my biggest calico. It was like almost, almost eight, almost eight and a half. Damn. On a on a crankbait. Really? With on the X fourteen, yeah. yeah that's, that's a yeah. sweet rod, dude. Yeah, it was a big fish. <laughs> that's kind yeah. of fun. That's like man. a that's like a, the equivalent to like a fourteen pound largemouth, isn't it? We have this argument all the time with large. It's probably like a. Like a twelve or a thirteen. Yeah, yeah. They they still a trophy. Oh, I was I was by myself, so I was like stressing out. Mm-hmm. I think that day I caught, I think like twenty pounds. Wow. That's dope. I, think I caught like a five, two fours, and then I caught the eight. That's freaking sick. And I was sick. like by myself, and I'm like, wow. I was like in within twenty minutes. I was like, this is great. Wow. <laughs> Went home excited, happy. I took this one of the middle ones home, ate it, fish tacos. Oh <laughs> hell yeah! Now you're talking. <laughs> um, Let's uh, let's plug your sponsor so you know Phoenix or whoever else and kind of yeah. point where they can view them, check them out. Do you have a YouTube channel or Instagram, anything like that? You can plug as well. Yeah, uh, you know Phoenix Rods, they help me out. Um, they're honestly, I can honestly say I've used a lot of rods. They are without a doubt the nicest ones I've used. Like I know Phoenix has a big following, a lot of people use them, and there's a reason they are that good. And uh, other than Phoenix, is just Highland Glass and Kingman, Micah Jones. Like I said. Do they, does he have a website or Instagram, anything you could plug him to? No. Okay. He's just, uh, it's kind of a local business, you know, and, you know, like I said before, without that guy, I wouldn't be able to do any of this. Super cool story. And even hearing your dad kind of talk about you growing up younger and kind of getting your head right is super cool. And your dad being so involved, super cool to see that, man. Yeah. Thanks. So I hope uh, to come back down and we can do another one soon. Or oh, maybe, dude. Maybe you can come. We could do a little round table with Cody and a couple other guys. Oh, that'd be a blast. We'll be, we'll be a real crazy one. Get you guys wild. You'll need adult supervision, <laughs> man. <laughs> oh, well, my, trust me. My wife's here and she starts flipping out. <laughs> we, start getting too yeah, drunk. we need it. <laughs> so thanks again, guys, for driving yeah. down and coming down. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. And uh, have a safe drive home. All right. Appreciate it, man.